start off our, um, our, our track, we, we have uh, Guillaume Montan, uh, who's the CEO of Bearer.sh. And, uh, and Guillaume, uh, welcome, Guillaume. Thank you. Thank you, uh, John. Welcome, everybody. So let me share uh, the slides. Yeah, I'm, I'm very keen to learn um, more about uh, Bearer.sh. Thanks. Um, particularly um, how, um, how how we can use uh, how we can use security um, to not only secure the business but help help um, uh, drive drive the business. So uh, now that you've got your uh, slides up, I'm going to leave you to it. Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, about APIs, obviously, but uh, our APIs are obviously driving innovation, but how to do that without putting your business at risk. Um, and it's uh, it's a topic that we believe is uh, a little bit underappreciated today. And uh, and I think uh, that could be an eye opener for, for some of you or the ability to actually go a bit deeper. Um, so just to quickly about myself. So I'm Guillaume Montar, I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Bearer.sh. It's a startup that I created uh, two and a half years ago uh, where we focused on API consumption and everything related to, to it. Um, so this is why today we're going to talk uh, about, about the, the risks involved with consuming APIs. So you probably know this very famous quote uh, from uh, Mark Andreessen about software is eating the world, which is still absolutely true even years after. But I think we can add a little bit of a twist to it nowadays, saying like, well, APIs are eating software because APIs are absolutely everywhere today, especially in our software that we're building. Um, and there is a lot of proof of that. Um, but we believe it's still only the beginning. Um, I don't know if you've read that article uh, that was published last year by Axel, one of the biggest uh, US VC, about APIs that are actually becoming the next big SaaS wave. Um, I think we can all contemplate the fact that we've been uh, lucky to have great API and great kind of API product these days with SendGrid or Twilio, which were basically the first wave. Um, but we see more and more uh, company and product that are API only, so API first product. And it's uh, it's a huge wave that, that started years ago and that is increasingly uh, uh, happening. And what it means uh, for everybody is that basically we've got more building blocks available uh, to build more new uh, software and new uh, kind of business. And so we can externalize at the end of the day more function and more core function uh, to those APIs. So relying on those external APIs is, uh, is really uh, only at the beginning, even when it's already quite present. Um, so some numbers actually to, uh, to, to, to really understand where we are today in 2020. Um, so Gartner um, actually shared some of those numbers uh, with us. Um, so 68% of organization today use private APIs. So private API in the sense of APIs to connect with other business or their own supply chain. Um, and you've got 52% uh, uh, of uh, the organization that use also APIs provided by third parties, uh, hence public APIs. So APIs that everybody here can actually consume without asking uh, any kind of uh, prior approval. So what's interesting uh, with those numbers, um, and especially when uh, it comes from Gartner, is that you can see that it's not really just about startup. It's really about a, a large organization, um, usually Fortune 500, I'll say. And it's really present uh, already today in those uh, the usage of those external APIs. If we look at the, at numbers, but from another perspective, from developer, Slash Data published uh, some numbers uh, a few weeks ago. Um, they state that 89% of developers use APIs today. Um, and 69 uh, use third-party APIs. So when you mix kind of all together those, 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 those numbers, you really understand that uh, the chances that your own organization today rely on external API is actually quite big, especially um, if you have a developer workforce or an engineering team. So how external APIs overall drive innovation? So we're going to take a look at two industry uh, uh, quickly, the e-commerce and the fintech industry um, to, to express that point. 
So on the e-commerce industry, um, so how APIs help that industry? There is three main areas where we see uh, APIs contributing to innovation in the e-commerce. It's first about helping uh, seller uh, automate uh, processes, um, especially there is a lot of, of marketplace and there is a lot of uh, uh, shop where you can uh, um, sell your product. And it's uh, it's one big part of where APIs uh, uh, play, uh, play a role. Um, clearly about improving the online buyer's experience um, from shipping and be able uh, for, to track that or from uh, uh, a buying uh, uh, experience with uh, all your possible credit cards or even Bitcoins, for instance, um, and win customers from competitors, uh, considering the competition is fierce, and how can you uh, be present everywhere. Um, if we take a, uh, an example with uh, Shopify that you probably uh, all know, um, Shopify is connected with dozens and dozens of APIs. And also other providers are connected with Shopify APIs. Um, if we look, um, we see that uh, Shopify is connected with online marketplace uh, APIs like Amazon or eBay. So you, when, you, when you sell something through Shopify, you can sell it actually uh, directly on Amazon and eBay, uh, thanks to those uh, integration. Social media APIs, Facebook or Instagram, if you're doing retargeting, advertisement, or just want to uh, share with your community. Um, support software, and it's interesting uh, because in that way, it's uh, Zendesk that is connected to Shopify API, but helping Shopify uh, a customer uh, hands their uh, customer support thanks to Zendesk, and Zendesk is obviously not the only one. Um, shipping, it's the same. Uh, Shippo and, and Shopify are connected together, helping customers and merchants track shipment. But what's also very interesting here is to see that Shippo itself is connected to multiple uh, external APIs from FedEx, UPS, DHL, etc. So it's really uh, it's really kind of a Russian doll of uh, product and APIs all connected together to build an experience at the end of the day and to build a platform that is Shopify today. Um, in the e-commerce, there is like a lot of different kind of APIs driving those innovation. Uh, we've mentioned a few like e-commerce platform, but you've also card APIs, you've got all the payment APIs, accounting, marketing ops APIs, um, and so on. Plus all, obviously, the, 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 the classical standard API like uh, emailing, etc. So APIs are really everywhere when you look at the at e-commerce the e industry, um, and it's helping fueling uh, dramatic innovation today. Let's take a quick look at fintech now. Um, in the fintech industry, it's the same. You have like uh, three uh, main key points of uh, how APIs really help and contribute to, uh, to to innovation here. The first one and one of the biggest is really the, the, the development cost and the time to market. Uh, thanks to APIs, uh, we've seen a rise of new fintech company uh, uh, lately um, because it really helps lower all those costs and those time to market. We can see now companies starting from day one and be able in six, nine month time frame uh, start to operate um, a, a fintech bank providing credit card processing payments. Uh, obviously, this is an odd off considering this is an industry that is quite heavy, highly regulated, um, and thinking that you can build those kind of product in that time frame is uh, is absolutely uh, 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 in incredible when you think about the innovation that goes behind which helps obviously create new business model. We're going to see one just after, um, but uh, by mashing up all those APIs, uh, all those backend behind the scene, we can create a very uh, new business model. Um, and obviously those kind of new business model and new companies also that arise with it uh, are a source of new income for traditional players. Um, and when I say traditional players, we can talk about bank, traditional bank, but not only. There is all the, 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 the players that also provide data and financial data uh, behind and more. If we take an example with Robinhood uh, that you probably know, Robinhood is a, is a, is a stock, uh, stock market application for the Generation uh, Z, uh, basically. So uh, every, uh, everyone can actually buy a stock on the market with their phone uh, for free without any fees. So it's really a revolution in the US uh, uh, for, for a new uh, class of, uh, of people buying stocks and usually the very young generation. And when you look at, at uh, Robin Hood, you see that Robin Hood um, is, is here and was created just on the, on the basis that they had API to actually uh, build that kind of product. Otherwise, Robin Hood would actually not be as successful as it is or would just not uh, exist uh, today. Um, we see Robinhood uh, connected to bank accounts, which is obviously very important for them. And interestingly, here again, they're using an API, they're using Pled, where Pled 
behind the scenes and an API first product connected to every traditional bank out there. So uh, Robinhood doesn't have to do uh, to do that job. They just can connect with one API. They do the same thing with financial data, which is very important for, for stock market with Xnight. And they do that also on the payment processing with Galileo. And there are obviously more APIs behind the scene, but it's interesting to understand that Robinhood is really uh, a present here because it's able to connect to all those uh, different providers. It's, a, it's really a service innovation on top of others. FinTech industry, it's the same. It's probably one of the industries where there is the most uh, kind of APIs from traditional banking APIs to bank as a service API, financial data, regulation APIs, card issuing APIs, trading APIs, communication APIs, and so on. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite big. Um, and that's also why uh, we see so many FinTech companies uh, these days. I think at the end of the day, we can talk about every industry. We can talk about retail, we can talk about uh, travel. Well. Uh, hopefully soon more about travel, um, but we can talk uh, about health, we can talk about insurance, all those industries, all those also traditional industries um, are getting unprecedented innovation um, thanks to, to the use and to the creation of all those APIs. But all of that obviously doesn't come without any risk. Um, and this is where we, why we're here today. Um, and one of the first uh, questions that you can ask yourself to start to assess that risk is, do you know the API your organization rely on? On top of your mind, do you have an idea about uh, how many of those APIs are actually important for your organization? What are they? How are they used? Um, and if you don't know that, obviously on top of your mind, do you have a list somewhere? Do you have a catalog of those? Um, and sadly, the answer is probably uh, no, you don't. You're in the dark. Um, actually, I, I talk to a dozen of uh, clients, customers every week, and I've never seen anyone actually having that that knowledge. Um, it's interesting because we all think, well, there is not that many, or maybe there is there is a few and we already know, uh, know them, uh, but in reality, when you go deeper, well, uh, you don't. Um, and, and that's that's what uh, actually we call shadow APIs. Um, this is uh, all those APIs that your organization rely on, but doesn't know about it. Um, obviously, the term shadow APIs is related to the term shadow IT that was uh, uh, created a few years ago, uh, stating that you're using uh, software, you're using uh, IT hardware that uh, is not managed and not controlled by your, your organization. It's exactly the same with, uh, with APIs uh, today. So what are the risks of having those shadow APIs? Um, so we class that in, in three kinds of risk. Uh, there is the security risk, um, there is the business risk, and there is the compliance risk. On the security aspect, um, the risk is that if you don't know, uh, probably your security team didn't vet the usage of that API. Um, because when they when they do, they are going to take a look at the fact that, that is that API uh, comply with your security policy? Are the data maybe encrypted? Or does it use the right SSL standard? Is the vendor itself at risk? That's all the question and all the job of the security team related to the use of those APIs. Then you've got the, 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 the business risk itself about how, at the end of the day, is your own business dependent of someone else's business and dependent of an API. So for instance, what happens if that certain API you're using is not working anymore because it suffered from a failure? Uh, but even more uh, scary, what happens if you can't use that API anymore tomorrow? Maybe the contract is not going to be renewed. Maybe the company providing it disappears. Maybe the regulator tells you that you can't use that API anymore. Um, and we've seen that uh, already, obviously. So assessing that risk from business aspect is very important. And lastly, the compliance one. Um, how do you use that API? Um, you, you, you obviously, when you use an API, you exchange some data. Um, and, and the data privacy is, is a very important topic these days. Um, we're in a world that is getting more regulated on those topic, and I think it's really a good thing. Um, we've seen GDPR in Europe. There is now CCPA in California, which is the same. And there are more and more of those regulations. You can even think about privacy shield that actually is broken now. Um, and that has an impact about how you move data from uh, Europe to the US, for instance. And compliance has a serious impact uh, uh, on your organization. Um, and those are, are questions that uh, need to be assessed when using an API. If you think about overall question to, to start assessing the, those risks on, on each API, you can start to think about yeah, what is the API? What is this API basically? Who is the vendor? 
when you start to ask those questions, you can obviously dig deeper about the compliance, the security guidelines. You can ask yourself, where is that API used? When you know that, you can actually ask the right business owner uh, uh, about, about that API. So what is the purpose? What's the impact? How do we use that API? So which type of data do we send there? So th there's a bunch of questions that needs to be asked uh, there to be able to assess overall the risk. Those are just a few examples and we'll dig just deeper after, but those are just basic questions uh, where we need to have answers here. And obviously to ask those questions, we first need to know which APIs uh, we rely on. And at the end, we try to prevent three key risks, uh, which are very real, very palpable. Uh, you try to avoid losing business, you try to avoid getting your reputation ruined, and you try to avoid compliance violation. Um, three examples here. Uh, on the loss of business, uh, you probably uh, have heard about, uh, about uh, uh, Zoom and GitLab that went down this summer uh, for, for a few hours. Uh, why they both actually went down at the same time? It's basically both were relying on Zura and Zura API. And Zura API actually went down. And interestingly, none of those business um, anticipated and evaluated the risk of using such an API the way they did. And it brought down their entire business with them. So they just basically lost business uh, because they relied heavily on someone else without really having that understanding or putting in place some, um, some, uh, so some potential uh, way to, to deal with, uh, with the issue. On the reputation itself, it usually goes uh, along the line with the data security. Um, sadly, you probably heard about Typeform uh, data breach in 2018. So Typeform is a, is a is quite a large company and is a product that is heavily used through APIs where you, we use Typeform to, to, to create a, a form and, and help uh, customers or partner um, uh, fulfill information. And obviously, um, with Typeform, uh, we've heard about a uh, few customers that had very important issue because they were relying on Typeform. Their customer data uh, went through Typeform, and because of the data breach, their customer data were actually breached uh, directly from Typeform. The fact is that if you don't know that you rely on that provider, you don't know how you rely on that provider, uh, you don't know how that provider behaves, obviously, at some point, uh, your data are not going to be that safe. Um, and if you knew about it, at least you could have prevented maybe sharing too much, or you could have uh, um, communicated with your own customer or your own users about a potential issue. So here it's it's about trying to mitigate uh, uh, the issue, which at the end of the day is a reputation and is, has a big impact of reputation and potentially loss of business also. On the compliance aspect, uh, we talked a bit about GDPR, um, but this is not the only one. It's interesting to see that those compliance, uh, those new compliance, um, they have uh, they have uh, some some financial uh, potential impact. Um, so you can get fined. Um, I think most people think that this doesn't happen. Actually, it does happen. Um, just two weeks ago, Carrefour was fined three million euro uh, because they didn't do enough on GDPR, and essentially. Uh, companies and organizations are going to get fined more and more um, because uh, the regulator gave a bit of time for all those companies to get accustomed with the regulation and to be able to put in place what was needed. And we're going to see more and more fine in the coming uh, years if we don't really uh, take the problem uh, first hand and, and find some solutions. So that's three really uh, palpable and important risks for your organization um, that can and that should go up to the uh, executive team um, to deal with. So overall, when you when you see that, you understand that API governance, because this is at the end of the day what we're talking about, um, is becoming crucial. What's quite interesting is to understand that um, in our industry, in the API industry, we are very focused on providing APIs, uh, building APIs, giving that APIs to others. Um, and we tend to forget a little bit on that side of the equation about the fact that we're consuming APIs. And actually, con we consume way more APIs than we're providing APIs. If you still rely on Gartner, 46% uh, of organizations expose APIs, while 70% actually consume APIs and more and more uh, uh, of those. Um, so when, when it comes to all those risks, you, you have a much more important risk on your consumption aspect. So you need to think about API governments uh, on, on, on that side of the equation and not only on the fact that you might be providing or not yet API in your organization, but for sure you're consuming and, and you're exchanging data with, uh, with providers. So where to start? How do you start with, uh, with trying to govern that, that, that API consumption? 
um, but we believe it, it starts with being able to detect and catalog your API dependencies. Like what your goal is to gain visibility and obviously eradicate those shadow API usage. Um, so you're going to do an audit. And from that audit, you're going to have to understand exactly what are the API you're using and where you're using those APIs. You're going to be able to ensure you're not using unauthorized API uh, that can put your organization at risk. Um, and you're going to be able to obviously help your security and compliance team uh, do some kind of review at that at that point. Um, it's interesting to look at the fact of where are API used. Um, I think we all tend to think API in large organization, it goes with an API management tool. It goes with an API gateway. Um, Actually, when we think about API consumption, it almost never uh, eats those kind of solutions uh, because API management solution, API gateway, they've been built essentially to provide API once again, and they are never or almost never used to consume API. The fact is that the API your organization consume and, and rely on, um, they are embedded directly in some code bases uh, that your engineering team, your developers, um, your, 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 uh, your, your external developers are, are, are using and, and they embed directly in their code base. So this is what you need to start to edit is, is actually those code base. Um, so really think about the fact that your API get or your API management solution are not really in the equation uh, today and they probably are not going to be tomorrow uh, either. So once you do that job of detecting, cataloging, doing that overall audit, what you're going to have to do is to build an API knowledge base because knowing all those APIs is not enough. You're going to have to gather a lot of, a lot of knowledge and that knowledge and the difficulty about that knowledge is that it comes from a very different group in your organization. It comes mm -hmm. from security, from engineering, from business, from compliance. You're going to crowdsource uh, the information. Your security team is here to assess the risk and create a framework around it, but your engineering and product team are here to report and document the usage, your business team to report the impact, um, and your compliance team to be able to provide uh, uh, reporting at the end of the day and also help a little bit uh, around the assessing the risk. So it's, it's really a, a common effort that needs to happen on a single source of truth um, and that need to, to, to leave. So it's not about doing it once and that's, that's over. Um, sadly, you have to do that all the time. So that's why you need to start to really integrate governance into the development workflow. Um, because if you use an API today, tomorrow you're going to use yet another one. So if you do an audit like everywhere, it's obviously not going to be enough. But also if you use an API today, the way you use it, it's probably going to change in three months, in six months, and you're not going to know about it. So integrating governance into the development workflow is one of the, uh, of the, of the key aspects. Um, this is usually in security practices. This is what we call DevSecOps, for instance. Um, so it's really to make sure that product and engineering team, um, they have some kind of autonomy. So they have a framework. They can, they can work in that autonomy. You build a mindset internally where it's more like, more like trust but verify. So security and compliance team, um, they, they need to be able to verify. They need to be able to put together a framework, but they can't actually approve everything. And they shouldn't. Um, by discussing with many uh, SISO uh, and compliance team, we really understand that the, the problem for them is that they are short staffed. So they can't, they can't approve everything. Uh, they don't have the resources to do that. And if they do, um, they would be seen as a, as, as a, um, as a way to slow innovation. So at the end of the day, what happens is that they get bypassed and nobody go uh, uh, and ask them about, about the approval and the authorization. Uh, because obviously if you use those APIs, it's because you want to innovate fast. Um, and, and if you start to have to put together some approval workflow, ask many different team, um, and it's going to slow down all your innovation and it's going to break kind of the, the, the promise of using APIs uh, to, to, to go faster. Um, so here, it's really about empowering the team, uh, being able to give them the right tools, being able to, to review the information, but not about blocking uh, uh, anything uh, because it doesn't work. And your last step, which is uh, uh, one of the most complex one, obviously, is to go much deeper in the granularity, is to start to really understand and map your API data flow. Um, because once you know the API you're using, once you're able to assess a part of the risk uh, ab about the providers, um, you need to, to go deeper and to try to really understand how you use each of those APIs, um, with which kind of data. Um, because as discussed, um, 
you, you exchange data with providers. Um, that's obvious. Uh, but which kind of data do you exchange? Do you exchange sensitive data? Do you exchange PI data? Do you exchange customer data? Um, you need to start to map those, those one to first prevent sharing data that you shouldn't. And if you still have to share some of those data, first you can report it from a compliance aspect, but also you can document it. So if something goes wrong, obviously you can react and you've got the right kind of information. So it's, it's it, that granularity is very difficult um, because again, it's going to be a discussion between product, between engineering, between security and between compliance. And this is something that evolves also dramatically because again, you might be using an API this way today, but in two days, in a month, in a year, you're probably going to use that API differently and probably going to exchange different kind of data. So mapping all those data flow are critical. Um, it's interesting to understand that from a compliance and a legal aspect, this is what uh, most of those teams already do uh, uh, for software that they're buying, trying to map the data that they're uh, putting together in those software. But usually when it comes to APIs, since it's a bit more technical, it's a bit more hidden, uh, there's a huge gap. Um, it's it, almost nobody uh, today does that job very well. Um, so there is a so, so yeah. Yep. Quick question. I mean, it sounds like um, it's really um, people have. Um, it's, it's a testament to uh, the the API economy that companies are able to launch new companies um, by collecting services from from lots of other other players. And established companies are also able to uh, accelerate their go-to-market for, for new products by by using the services of, of others. But I guess your your point is that it's not enough just to like any outsourcing. Um, you you can't. There are certain things that you can't outsource, like the governance. You can't really um, uh, outsource, and that's that, I guess that's the the point of, of what you're what you're suggesting. For, particularly for mission critical uh, services, the the APIs uh, that you're you're consuming are part of that whole mix and it is part of the core of your business that you you can't um, you you can't outsource. Well, you you can you, well you can out you can outsource this because of those APIs, but you you can't uh, say like well because it's someone else. Uh, everything is done. I'm okay. Uh, I don't need to look at it. I don't need to look at how they do things. I don't need to report it. I don't need to document it. Um, and this is where um, it's, it's getting very tricky is because we started to use APIs with low level function and with, mm -hmm. with, with things that were not that important. And, yeah. and, and the, where the world is moving is we really externalize way more function to those APIs. Basically for us, those APIs are just dependency. It's, it's not a bad word to say it's a dependency but a dependency just has to be managed like every other kind of dependency. And this one, since it's quite technical, it's quite hidden, um, it, most people don't realize how important those dependencies are and what are the impacts. And the goal is to really resurface th those information and help you uh, assess those risks and continue to innovate with APIs because if we don't do that job, uh, at some point we're going to eat a wall and people are going to say, okay, well, we're not going to use anymore uh, all those APIs because it's too risky. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to end up in that situation for sure if we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's going to... So, uh, so do, you, um, do you, you have a closing slide? Because I, I really want to make Absolutely. sure that what, what, what can you leave us? Uh, so it's one, really, one. For, for us, truly about innovating through APIs without the risk. So this is, uh -huh. this is something that we have actually work in progress at Burr. We're building a platform to, to try to do, to, to do that job about helping discovering, manage, and secure. We're doing that with Design Partner today um, in, in the goal of there is nothing that exists. Um, and so we're trying to gather a group of people and a group of interest to understand how we can actually solve those different challenges um, that are not simple, but that are obviously for today and for the future. And if anyone obviously is willing to discuss about it, um, more than happy to connect. Uh, we're trying to find the best solution for the industry and hopefully for anyone here. Thanks very much, uh, Guillaume. Thanks to you.